Hey friendlies, how's it going? Welcome back to my RV life. So this video has been a couple weeks in the making. <laughs> I finally got it done. This is all the stuff around Jackson, Wyoming. My first view or non-view of the Grand Tetons, a couple of camping spots, some pretty sights and things along the way. So I'm going to share that with you today and stay tuned till the end. I am going to be announcing the winners of the Christmas Day video for those who who watched it after the live stream. I gave the later viewers opportunities to win a few prizes and I will be announcing those at the end. So watch all the way through to find out if you won a cool prize. All right, enjoy the video. There ain't nobody gonna do it for you. Got to find your own. especially these old small towns. I like to drive through first, just kind of see everything before I go and run errands. I think I want to stop at the grocery store. I did get my mail sent here. There is a UPS store, but it's not going to be here until Friday and it's Wednesday. So um, I'm kind of, this is the one of the challenges with being on the road and, and trying to coordinate mail. Um, and in case you haven't seen how I get mail, I'm going to put a link up here to the video about how I get mail. I love these old western towns in the west. They really do up the whole cowboy thing and keep try to keep the old buildings original. The city of Jackson, which lies in the valley of Jackson Hole, was originally populated by the Native American tribes including Shoshone, Crow, Blackfeet, Bannock, and Gros Ventre. Of course I'm pronouncing those wrong. When I was up in my camp, I thought, you know, I'll stick around this camp until um, Friday and then go into Jackson and get my mail and move on from there. And then I kind of changed my mind because I got company at my last um, camp unexpectedly. And so I ended up leaving early. And so now it's like I, the smoke is really bad and I can't really see the views. And so part of me is just like, well, I should just head up to Montana and hit this on the way back. But now I have to stay here till Friday anyway to get my mail. So, uh, you know. I don't like to plan a whole lot and, and you do have to plan your mail so that can be a little um, you know it can put a if for those of us who don't like to plan and like to do things spontaneously you, you kind of can't do that okay I don't know what's going on here I'm gonna drive one fun fact uh, about Jackson is that it was named Jackson in 1894 and some of the early buildings can still be found in the town square the town of Jackson elected the first all-woman government, including the town council and mayor, who in turn appointed women to town marshal, town clerk, and treasurer in 1920. Oh yeah. The grocery store was really, really nice. So I stocked up on a few things that I normally only get at Whole Foods. And now I have to travel about 50 miles outside of Jackson for boondocking. This is really the only place I could find in the Bridger Teton National Forest. So we'll see what we can find out here. It's a beautiful drive, even with all the smoke. Colorado, California, both on fire. So it's blowing east. I can't see anything? I can barely see anything, but you can almost see the mountains. Oh my gosh! Through the smoke. What a bummer. It's really smoky. Wow. Yeah, actually, I have though. It's nothing compared to what some people are going through who are in the heart of the fires. Sadie and I pulled over in a pullout on the side of the road 
It's supposed to be great views of the Grand Tetons, but unfortunately, because of the smoke, can't really see them. It's a Snake River below. Sadie, look. <laughs> you just wanted to see what was on the other side, huh? Come on. Good girl. Wait. Can you sit? Well, this looks like the stop where you have normally iconic views of the Grand Tetons, but with all the fires out west, not this time. Maybe I'll try to come back when I head back down south. Seedy girl. <laughs> what a ham. spending the night out of town, out of cell signal service, and, um, this is only one way, and, uh, I would, I, I thought about running a hotel room, I thought about getting an RV park in town, and exploring the town, but honestly, it's way too touristy, it's, tur you know, I mean, what do you do in a tourist town? You shop, and I'm not in shopping, so, um, I'm just going to pick up my mail. I already stopped at the UPS store, but they had just delivered. I'd just gotten my notice from Amazon that it was delivered. They said give an hour. So I came downtown. There's a juice bar. I was going to try to visit the juice bar, but it's just right in the heart of downtown. It's packed. There's no parking. I really just want to get out of here. And unfortunately, the smoke is so bad. The views are bad. So there's Boondocking Spot about an hour away. I might just uh, pick up my mail and go there and then hit the parks tomorrow, just drive through and head to Montana. There's public parking. Is that public parking? Hang on. Well, you know what? It is public parking. All right. But there's no room for me in my big old RV. It's public parking. But look, it's just, uh, this is no fun. This is no fun. It's just way too crowded. Me no like. You know, it's funny. I try to come to these popular places Partly because I think it'll make good video, but I get here and I'm just like, I can't handle it. It's just not fun for me. I think I just want to go. We'll see. So I left Jackson. I was really just wanting to find a spot that was quiet and secluded where I had an internet signal where I could just settle for a few days and get some work done. And I think I had found a boondocking spot because that's what I said in the video and I don't know what happened to that boondocking spot but that didn't work out maybe it wasn't there or something things around Jackson were just really crowded and really populated and it was toward the end of September at this point after Labor Day and I couldn't believe the crowds just everywhere the year of COVID and so I started looking for campgrounds I was like I just want to stop I'm tired I've been on the move a lot I'll just find a campground all the campgrounds were full 
and everyone, I went to several, out of the way, in the way, I mean, and everything was full. So I finally found one, well, not finally, but I found one that I was like, okay, I'm going to go check this out. It was a little bit further away from everything, and I go out this, this back road. It wasn't a forest road. It was a real road, and I go out this back road past this beautiful horse farm. These horses are beautiful. Good morning. Hi. I don't have anything to feed you. Oh, you're so pretty. Good morning. You're so pretty. Hi. Hi. And uh missed a sign that said the road was closed. <laughs> so I get up there. There's a guy uh, in his truck is pulled over. He's just sitting there. A couple guys actually. They're loaded up with gear like they're going out camping. And I sit there for a while. I'm like, what the heck is going on? And I do see the heavy equipment up ahead. And I finally get out and chat with them. And they're like, yeah, the road is closed until five. And it's like 3.30. I'm like, I am not turning around. So I had to wait an hour and a half just sitting there on the side of the road, maybe an hour, waiting for the road to open. But luckily that happened because the campground that I was going to, I was second in line third in line uh and these two guys ahead of me were actually going out there was a national forest way out they said where there was boondocking but i was tired i wasn't going to go looking around unless i had to and when the road opened at five i got into the campground and i was there were several spots i was able to find a spot and when i later talked to the campground host he said that they had been full every night since they opened and I can't remember you know since they opened for the season or for the last year every single night they were filling up so if the road had not been closed there's a really good chance I wouldn't have gotten a spot so I ended up at this pretty little campground it, I stayed uh, I could have stayed two nights I decided to move on after one night uh, and I had to be out by seven to get back on the road before the road closed again I think the road was closing again at I think the road was closing at 7, so I got up at 6.30 to get out there and get on the road before the road closed. But it was a pretty little campground. There was a lake, but you can see there were smoky views and everything. And uh, I stayed there and then I moved on. It's eight o'clock in the morning and that's the line of people waiting to get a campsite tonight. Look at that. Yellowstone. 
and it's like four hours, which is pushing it for me. And by the time I do sightseeing and everything, I probably won't pull in until late this afternoon, and I'll be tired, and I don't like searching for boondocking when I'm tired. So I'm going to go into Cody, Wyoming, which I've been to before, my first road trip uh, when I moved to California. There's a lot of boondocking there, and I thought it would be fun. I really need a spot at this point just to sit, or sit down, to, uh, do nothing for a few days, and get some work done. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to explore some Yellowstone today and uh, and then head up to uh, head to Cody, Wyoming and hopefully find a great blue docking spot and at least ride out the weekend. It's Friday morning. So uh, crazy year, not like in 2020 for so many reasons. This is another reason that campground host where I just left said for nine straight weeks they've been booked solid every night are camping because they can't go anywhere because they're cooped up and they're like let's go camping and um, it sucks for me <laughs> it's good for them it just not not giving me what I look for you know I mean it's really hard to find solitude and even it's you know Wednesday Thursday off season after Labor Day I expected to be able to find a campsite a place to camp and I went to two campgrounds that were full the only reason I got the campground I was just at is because the road was closed all day. So if that road had been open, I wouldn't have been able to camp where I camped last night. There were some uh, pullouts. I, I was tempted to try, um, but I, I was like, nah, you know, I'll just keep going even though the road sucked and I was losing internet. And on the way out, a lot of people were camped at the places I thought about camping that said, they didn't say no camping. Well, anyway, they were state trust behind the sign it said no camping I thought I could have gotten away with the um the uh with camping and the pullouts but I didn't push it but I could have gotten away so there's always options that's my point I'm gonna drive so what'd you think did you enjoy that video I have a little bit of a disclaimer not just for this video but every video I am not claiming to be like an expert in anything, <laughs> the places that I travel or anything. I am not even claiming to be like an expert videographer. I shoot when I feel the urge to shoot and sometimes putting it all together, this video was especially difficult, but sometimes putting it all together that things don't go together in the right order or in the right place. So you might see some things in this video at the beginning of the video that some scenery that should have gone at the end of the video. I This video especially, I don't know what was going on, but it's just kind of a mashup of scenery that I shot over a few days period. And that's often true in my videos. Everything's not necessarily where it should be. So uh, a couple of you have noticed I'll be driving it down and downtown and I'll say, yeah, this is blah, 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 when in fact it's something else. I try to be as accurate as I can, but I'm just one person trying to bring you my life. <laughs> The interesting parts of my life anyway, and I'm not perfect by any means, and sometimes I uh, just don't take everything that in my travels, especially, like I said, I try to be as accurate as I can, but I'm not always 100% accurate, okay? So, you know, a lot of people like to say, I gotcha, that's not where you were. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but without much further ado, as promised, I have more prizes to give away from my Christmas live stream, although these are the prizes that I'm giving away to those who were not at the live stream but who watched it after it was live, the replay. So I've got two, three, four, five prizes to give away. And, oh, you know what? And after I give away the prizes, we'll talk about the damn hat. <laughs> I've talked about it before, but you guys have dirty minds. So anyway, let's talk about the prizes. I've already given away, I don't know, it, more than a dozen prizes. They're all, they've all been mailed out. So hopefully you've all received the prizes from the live stream by now. One of the, a couple actually, I, I gave away some phone calls with me and I really enjoyed speaking with the viewers who won the phone calls. That was so much fun. And I've already given away two 
$50 donations to charities and a couple great charities. One was for women and girls. I can't remember the name of it. And the other one was NAMI, I think, or NAMI for mental illness. And what a pleasure and an honor to be able to give uh, to charities of your choice. And I have two more charities to give away today. So the winners of a $50 gift to the charity of your choice in your name, Tani Living Good, T-A-N-I Living Good. You are a winner of charity. And Anne Marie Geyer, you are also a winner of a $50 donation to your charity. All of the winners that I'm going to mention, uh, need to email me within seven days at carolynsrvlife at gmail.com, carolynsrvlife at gmail.com. Email me within seven days so that we can get your prize to you. So the charity winners are Tani Livingood and Anne Marie Geyer. The winner of the pouch is Cecilia CC. Cecilia CC wins the pouch. And the t-shirt, which was an extra large white tee, is Marilyn Renaud, R-I-N-A-U-D. Marilyn Renaud, Renaud won the t-shirt. And the phone call, a long time viewer who I'm really looking forward to chatting with, a long time viewer, lender of moral support and encouragement for the more than four years that I have been on YouTube and uh, always there to leave a kind comment. I'm really honored to uh, get a chance to talk to you, Uncle Mo. <laughs> so Uncle Mo is the winner of the 20 minute phone call. So uh, it'll probably be a Zoom call, phone call if that's okay with you. So uh, let me see. Email me at carolynsrvlife at gmail.com if I named you as a winner. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned next time for Grand Tetons and Yellowstone. Yeah, finally, next time I will get you Grand Tetons and Yellowstone National Parks. Thank you all who are here, who get it, who get me, who get my channel about being authentic, being true to yourself, no matter what that means. I try to make my channel, I, I really thought my channel was about just em personal empowerment, female empowerment, showing what it's like to live unapologetically, that's actually in the about section of my channel, and about being true to yourself, and for those of you who get that and who are here, thank you, it means a lot to me. It's a five gallon freaking bucket, it's a five gallon bucket. As I've said before, I was in an extra in Nomadland, one of the early production companies. They, they named Five Gallon Bucket, and so we became the Five Gallon Bucket Club. Anybody you see wearing this hat was in the movie in, in one way, shape, or form. So it's a five gallon... I don't even see what you guys see. You guys have dirty minds. Be sure to subscribe. Hit the thumbs up. Thank you all so much for being here. I'll see you next time. In the meantime, be happy. Be free, be kind, stay safe. Bye.